What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video and welcome to a chilly day at the homestead. It smells like snow is in the air. We are anticipating a big storm, first storm of 2020 to hit us tomorrow. We had like a little teaser snow the other day, which really kind of brings in the mood for the holidays, man. There's no better than going into Christmas with some white in the ground. So I'm like a little kid before a snowstorm. I don't know anybody that can relate. If you can smash that thumbs up button. There's kind of like this unexplainable excitement that I feel still to this day and I'm 29 years old. Growing up, I was that kid in the neighborhood that had a landscaping business in the spring, summer, and fall, but in the wintertime, I actually ran around on my dad's Kubota with a 54-inch hydrostatic blade on the front. It was a BX2350, first like diesel tractor that we had ever had, really first kind of diesel that I had ever actually driven before my dad bought the 5.9 Cummins, and I always got so excited to get on that thing and play around in the snow, go out and plow the customer's driveways and take care of pretty much my neighbors, and I'm feeling that exact same nostalgia today, except rather than the BX2350, 23 horsepower subcompact tractor, we're gonna be playing around in the snow in my SVL90, which some might say is just a small little upgrade from that of the BX, and uh, I'm really excited about it. So I'm gonna fire this thing up here real quick and let it warm up. It's chilly out here, boys, 25 degrees today. Just like with those glow plugs. Let that thing warm up for a few minutes before we start running it around. But a little update on the homestead. We've since changed our minds about picking up some livestock as much as we really wanted to do it. We just decided to kind of push the pause button for the time being because we are new parents. Little Jack is almost six months old, which is incredible time is flying by. But that's considered, it's also a lot of new responsibility and we just didn't want to layer on even more responsibility. Now we already have between family, marriage, running a business and everything else that falls in between. So I did end up pulling down our goat pen. It used to kind of run right around this area. We had two little aluminum sheds. You can see one is back there now. <laughs> and then the other one is just kind of going to be like general storage for outdoor tools and stuff along those lines. Uh, but I took all the, the gating out. It's since over here. We're going to dispose of that soon. And I spent a good amount of time actually trying to kind of pull some of the rocks out the ground. Big surprise here on Rocky Ridge. This was a nightmare and now it looks a little bit better. By no means perfect, but it's a rough start to what will be a nice finished product. So just a little small update on the homestead here as there's lots of changes taking place including what will be the beginning of a very big change coming soon, which will be all out in this wood line here. This wood row is actually gonna end up getting removed. And uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we are gonna build our shop. So more to come on that in a build series. It's just right now we're kind of working through the preliminary conversations of permitting and zoning and uh, getting quotes from builders and all that fun stuff. So more to come on that, super exciting. It's just that there's a little bit of homework involved before we break ground. Now we've got our first mod coming to the F450 and that is none other than one of our made in America enthusiast bullet antennas to replace this big old dangly thing. Boom. Now that's what I'm talking about boys. Looks so much better and just think guys, a bullet antenna just like that could win you the truck of your dreams and a pile of cash. Now, speaking of giveaways, as you guys know, Dream Diesel giveaway number 14 is now officially over and all the entries have been sent over to Compliance Sweepstakes Services, our third party sweepstakes agency. They are our proctors and administrators that conduct the drawing for the winners. There will be six winners of number 14. The grand prize is the truck and $15,000 and then we have those five additional prizes. I'll roll out all that information once we get it back from them, should be right towards the end of 2020. So the question is, are you feeling lucky? Because you very well may be getting the call of a lifetime. So more information to come on that and related to Dream Diesel giveaway number 15, it is coming. We're gonna take this merry holiday season off through Christmas and the new year and we will be launching Dream Diesel giveaway number 15 right in the beginning of 2021. Oh man, as much as I love snow, I hate the byproduct of what our township does by throwing salt everywhere. The brand new F450 is already caked in salt and brine. It's absolutely disgusting, man. I just wish that they would stop using stuff that's so bad for our vehicles. On a more positive note, super cold start and a 2020 F450 dually. All right, I'm not as salty anymore. Hook that bucket up, get ready for the snow tomorrow. Snow ready, my friends. I'm super excited. I hope that we just get absolutely dumped on because I am going to thoroughly enjoy my first snow removal in the SVL. So the objective today is that we're gonna be doing something really cool 
to the gooseneck. We've been working on doing some rock lights on the Denali down at the shop, which is actually where Jake is right now. So we'll catch up with him shortly. Now I wanted to do something different on the trailer. And that's that we are going to match the Denali's rock lights to the trailer's rock lights, which are not installed yet. We need to get this down to the shop. And we are going to use the F450 to do that. Now, fortunately, a good friend of mine is coming up today that has the CDL so we can properly tow with that combination. But we'll do them a favor and at least get it hooked up. ready to rock and roll and guys look at that view that thing looks absolutely breathtaking to say the least this is the first time that i've got the f450 hooked up to the white gooseneck and it's a very bittersweet moment it's bittersweet because it's not like i can pilot it and my buddy who happens to be a neighbor requested that i not film him because he just likes to keep his confidentiality at the utmost so in efforts to not disrespect him i'll see you guys down at the shop Huge shout out to my buddy for bringing this thing up for us. Jake literally just got back from my house, running him back up so he can get on with his day. It's kind of an inconvenience right now because of this whole CDL thing. But as I had mentioned, I'm actually studying for my CDL permit. And I hope to take that test here within honestly the next few weeks. Feeling pretty confident. There's a lot of practice tests that are online and my buddies that have CDLs had advised to basically take those practice tests. For the general knowledge and the air brakes exam, I wanna get both of them done and hopefully take my exam in an 18 wheeler that is air brakes equipped in a manual. So that way I can basically just drive anything. I could in theory actually take my exam with this setup right here, but then I'd be limited with my ACDL, so I could only really ever tow with an automatic truck and trailer setup versus a semi setup. And if I'm gonna do it, I might as well get it all done one time rather than having to do it again in the future because you never know what the future holds. What's up, dude? Welcome to the vlog. Hey guys, how are you? So Jake right here is holding some goodies that came in. This one is the one that we're gonna dig in here shortly. So brother, are you with me? Making progress, boys. We've got our lights connected here, along the side, and in the back. Rear wheel well and the rear LEDs are connected. Now Jake's just gonna move along and work on connecting these. One thing that we like to do when installing rock lights is putting quick disconnects in the fender liners. That way, if uh, you need to access, service, whatever the case might be, and you need to drop the fender liner, you're not dealing with a hardwired situation. That would just be a total pain in the butt. So a quick, little, easy step to avoid a headache in the future, FYI, for you guys that are gonna be doing these things. And then we've got the inside switch wired and mounted up. It's tucked right up in here, which is a pretty nice spot. When mounting up these switches, I like them to be visibly out of sight, but enough to where you know that they exist. I know what I would do without these headlights. So I like them to be visible, so that way when you crank it on, you can see a little bit of its glow like that, but I don't like it to actually be visible to the naked eye while driving, because the likelihood is these rock lights are gonna be on at night, and you can't dim these switches, but you wanna know that they're on, so that way when you get out of your truck and turn it off, you still know and you can see that it's on, that way you can turn it off and avoid killing your battery. So I'm really happy with this mounting location. Click it once off, click it once on. You'll know that it is on, but it won't be glaring as kind of like this bright light source in your eye as you're driving with your dim adjusted to whatever your preference is. I know it's a very minor thing, but it can become a major pain if not thought out ahead of time. Jake's gonna continue working on finishing up all of the wiring and essentially completing the circuit, tidying up the Denali, and we are gonna get to work on the trailer outside to essentially match the rock lights on this truck with the trailer. It's gonna be a sick combination, something I've wanted to do for a very long time time and we're finally getting it done today uh, but before we do that i'm getting sidetracked here we've got the headlights built and back in the denali grill and bezels reinstalled and guys it looks fantastic the life gives you lemon scenario is so proper for this because we really wanted to keep some of the chrome inside this bezel we scratched some of it and some of it peeled off as we masked it with tape 
So Jake had the great idea to paint it all black, and I'm so happy he suggested that. White really wouldn't have looked right, because it would have blended in this whole headlight into the fender, which I don't like too much white is not good. But it also works perfectly with the black, and it's inside the housing from the factory, so it almost matches side to side. And to my knowledge, this is the first set of 2020 Denali headlights that have been built with that style. I'm really happy with how they turned out. So we got a ton of rock lights right now, but not all of these are gonna be going on the trailer. Only about a quarter of them are going to be, 10 to be exact. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna power these rock lights with this little remote control switch. We had put a battery on my trailer some time ago to power the winch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a harness with an inline 20 amp fuse to the battery, which is then gonna connect to this switch, which has this little handy dandy remote right here on and off, which is going to allow us to control the rock lights from the cab of the Denali. Now, I've never installed rock lights on a trailer before, so this is going to be a first, but I'm pretty excited about it because it should be a relatively easy task. We're actually going to secure these things right into the floorboards. It's going to be that simple. It takes a degree of creativity installing rock lights on a truck because you kind of have to find the right placement to get the proper shine direction. But here, it's a little simpler because all we need to do is shine down. We can tap right into the floorboards without having any screw taps pop up and through. So we're gonna be installing 10 lights. It's gonna be two up front, two in the rear, and three on either side. So one will go about here, one will go about there, one will go about here, one in front of the set of tandem axles, one in the rear of the set of tandem axles. That'll complete the package, and that'll give us a nice balanced look from side to side. So without further ado, boys, let's jump into it. experts in installing freaking rock lights at this point. I'm surprised there's still daylight at this too. We've got 18 installed in the Denali and 10 installed on the gooseneck, totaling out at 28 rock lights. Ooh, on day. Ooh, it sounds way better. Way better. Let's hear the exhaust, wrap this thing up. Wow, it sounds so much better, dude. Pipe the hood, let's see it, Andy. Come on. Ah. Woohoo! Seeing an S460 7.7 on a Steed Speed second gen manifold with a fleece coolant bypass, powder coated to match Banks Monster Ram, and that is a hell of a setup if I do say so myself. You even got the little coolant expansion tank that's tucked to your side, the one battery. That is a clean, clean, clean setup if I do say so myself. Man, that is a great sounding setup right there, dude. If you guys want to get anything free shipping from Whirly Fab, just like just like our buddy Andy did right here with his his brand new spanking new setup. Use code enthusiast and you'll get free shipping on literally anything. I mean, if you wanna get like that set up right there, free shipping, it saves you a few hundred bucks. So we are wrapped up on the trailer, guys. We've got our three up front. There you can see some of the wiring there. Got them coming around. We've got four on the side in total, two in the middle, one up front, one in the back, and then four again on the other side here. We've got our wiring harness coming in on the side to what is our remote controller right there, which powers our remote. So we can just hit this button. We've got our battery on board and we've got light, my friends. So we're gonna have to wait until the end of this video. Definitely stay around so we can light this thing up at night. I cannot wait to see. Sun is starting to go down, so we're getting close. But I think it's going to look absolutely awesome to say the least. And guys, wait real quick. We gotta go take a look at the Denali. All right, boys, we got the lights off in the shop and Jake, cue the lights in three, two, one. These things are sick, dude. I love how crisp the light shadow is. Dude, you pick some really good spots in the back to mount these things. Generally, I like to use it as a point of reference to see how well rock lights were installed by the light shadow on the ground. You can see this is a nice straight line. That all comes down to mounting location. If you don't mount consistently, you're gonna get a very inconsistent shine on the ground. Whereas right here, man, nice, clean, smooth. Same thing in the front, you can see that nice, straight line across. I cannot believe the Denali's gone this long 
without rock lights. This was 100% overdue. Long, long, long overdue. See, I like, I love the embers because it gives it contrast. Oh, yeah. All white, yeah. it can be too much. There are applications like this guy right here, Dream Deals Giveaway 14, like all white looks great. But I feel like on a white truck, you need some amber to just set it apart. <laughs> oh my God, boys, I love this thing. Wow, even more than I already do. There's no denying that. I say it all the freaking time in my, my vlogs. You guys already know the deal. Now, unfortunately, I was planning on marrying the Denali back to the gooseneck, so that way I could avoid calling my buddy to end up bringing this rig back home for me today. But the snow and the forecast, the Ford's already covered in salt, the Denali's perfectly clean. Ugh, it just can't happen today, boys. It looks like we're gonna have to phone a friend. We'll see you back up at the homestead. Ah, we are back up at the homestead and the smell of a winter storm is in the air, guys. Can't even emphasize how much I absolutely love the anticipation of a snowstorm. And check out the view from the top of the ridge right here. Absolutely fantastic. I could just stand out here and appreciate it all night. But guys, we've got something to show y'all. The F-450 parked in an ever so strategic fashion so we can click our remote and turn our trailer rock lights on. Check it out, guys. 14GN has rock lights and it looks awesome. It turned out better than I could have ever anticipated. This is the first time seeing it at night with all of you. And you know what I'm seeing right now? I'm seeing really good harmony and synchronization of the lights. Not seeing any real bad black spot shadows, except for obviously the toolbox on the bottom left side there. But we've got even placement and distribution of all of our lights and it is shining right. Looking really, really good. The fact that we can control it with a remote and do some crazy stuff. That's kind of wild on the eyes. Interesting. I didn't even know that I could do any of this stuff. But it looks absolutely kick ass. Let's, uh, let's, let's add a little bit of light to this scenario here. Here, we'll unlock the 2020 Super Duty. And we are looking awesome. You guys might be thinking, all right, dude, did you really put rock lights on your trailer just to be able to illuminate the road at night? And although that is a cool component of it, really the main reason was functionality. I don't have any auxiliary or accessory lighting on this trailer, and I haven't since I bought it in the beginning of 2019. And I found myself in lots of situations where I could really use some additional lighting. And I figured there were a few options. A, it was adding a light bar kind of where the winch is, or B, starting off with a set of rock lights lights around the perimeter because at night especially when it's dark out this is going to be tremendously beneficial in giving us the light we need to make whatever we're trying to do just a little bit easier and i really wanted something on a remote control so i could just click the button from the comfort of the cab to turn on and off the lights i'm absolutely stoked anybody with a trailer out there i advise that you do this i think you're going to thank yourself tremendously and i'm pretty excited about the fact that it's done to my trailer because you really don't ever see it all that often and i I truly do drive to be different. Well, and that's kind of my case in point right there. Even backing it up at night, having that illumination, seeing exactly where your wheels are can be tremendously beneficial. So I see it as a form and a function upgrade. It's nice when your mods can knock out two birds with one stone. So that being said, guys, thanks for watching as always. If you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, but you stop by from time to time, it's great having you definitely consider tapping that subscribe button. And while you're there, ever so precisely tap that notification bell, like button, and I'll look forward to seeing y'all in the next upload. Good. <laughs> 2020 blizzards boys how could this year get any more crazy